It's the Bison Football Show. Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiber. You know, I felt that these two teams were the two best teams. Somebody asked me early in the week if, if we had the best team, and I knew the two best teams were playing this weekend. I didn't say it, but I felt the two best teams in the field were playing today. That's Northern Iowa coach Mark Farley. You and I came to Fargo with a hard edge, and the Bison gave it right back to them. The result was a head-knocking, old-school masterpiece, and the Bison are still dancing. Coach Chris Kleiman is here, and Coach, every time with yeah. these guys, it is a battle, isn't it? Yeah, we know it was going to be, and, and uh, two really good uh, football teams, well-coached, uh, uh, play really hard, play really fast, and, and we just made a few more plays. That's a physical football game, too, every time with those guys. I think it's so hard-hitting and, you know, inches. It's a game of inches, not yards with these guys. Yeah, absolutely, and, and uh, both teams had pretty similar numbers. I thought our numbers in the second half were much better, which kept our defense on the sideline, and, and our offense just kept churning out some yards until we were able to get the big scoring drive. Yeah, and our NODAC Mutual Insurance halftime scoreboard, that's it. There was not a lot of points. Yards are tough. I mean, this is a grinded-out game at this point. It's going to be awesome to look at the second half before we we do that. The Gate City Bank hot seat this week, veteran receiver Zach Vra. All right, Zach, what's your favorite pro team, any sport? Gotta go with the hometown heroes, Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Who would you describe as your hero? You know, a lot of people hate him, but LeBron James, young guy right out of high school, great explosive player. Yeah, no doubt about that. What's your favorite sport other than football? If it's considered a sport, longboarding. Okay. Name something you are bad at. Golf. Can't <laughs> hit it to save my life. It's a hard sport, man. Yep. What drives you crazy about your roommates? Um, how dirty the apartment can get sometimes and how lazy we are, but it happens. You're from the metro down there in traffic. Are you patient or do you get frustrated? Uh, I'm pretty patient. You know, I like to stay cool. I don't like to get too frustrated about too many things. I can see that. Yep. What do you like most about Fargo and North Dakota in general? Um, just simply how friendly everyone is. What do you like most about the Bison coaching staff as a whole? How personable everyone is and um, just how well they do the job. What's the one thing people don't know about you? Um, I'm an avid artist. Well, Coach, at halftime, I'm guessing a lot of adjustments were made. This was a tight ball game. It really was, but we were really calm. Just talked to the guys about we needed to have the best 30 minutes uh, of the season, and uh, somebody needed to make a play. Uh, but continue to do what we're doing. Uh, I, I knew we could move the guys up front, and our offensive line was going to do a better job, and then defensively continue to keep away from that explosive play that hurt us so much the first time we played them. There's your final score. What a win for the Bison on your NODAC Mutual Insurance final scoreboard, 23 to 13, and yards were tough on both sides. Great defensive effort by both teams. Not a lot of plays out there, 54 and 58. That was the nature of the football game, though. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. We had a great game plan for him. We knew he was going to try and come in and run it a lot. And, um, you know, just try to keep him in the pocket as much as we could and um, just limit the big play. You know, that was really a huge focus this week. And, you know, like their longest run was 15 yards. So, I mean, we did a good job of that. Credit to the defense. I mean, they came out ready to try to stop the run. We just, uh, coach always tells us one more yard. When it's blocked for three, get five. When it's blocked for anything, and just keep going up front. Then later we're going to break out. And like King did, we hit, his longest was a 51-yarder. And that's our mentality going into the game, just keep pounding, keep pounding. Then we're going to break one. Anytime we can pin a, an offense that, you know, close to their own goal line, that's huge. I mean, we just build off of that. And, you know, I mean, obviously the, the crowd loves it. They get into it too. And we just try and, you know, hold them down there. I think it's confidence. I mean, I, just, I trust the guys up front like every week. But I just think I'm gaining more confidence with it, and I'm just able to hit it a lot faster and just be explosive with it. Our main focus for the game was to stop the run, and uh, I think we did a good job, and we uh, really focused on tackling from the previous time we played. We, you know, we left some plays out on the field, and um, you know, we thought we just had to stop the run game and, and limit the big play. I think we did a good job of it. You know, in such an emotional, close game like this, too, you half expected you and I's players to be very, very upset. It was quite the opposite. They were very respectful of NDSU. Here's Tim Kilfoy. I can speak for DeAndre, too, that we look forward to this game every single year. Um, this is a game you love to play in. 
Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for NDSU. I wouldn't even say it's a team I dislike or, or hate. I mean, you got respect for this team, and, and you know they got respect for us. They know that, you know, if there's one team that can come in and beat them, it's us. And then we also know that this is going to be the best team we play, play all year. Um, I think that it doesn't change their mindset or my mindset. It just, it just takes out a focus, whether it's throughout the week and then coming to this day um, to another level. It's kind of fun to hear that, isn't it? Uh, respect on both sides. Yeah, you bet. And uh, there is. There's great respect for both programs. And the guys, they know they're going to play the game the right way. I'll tell you what, Ben LeCompte is making plays that are game changers in these tight playoff games. Yeah, and we really f believe the formula for success in the playoffs is to be able to run the football on offense, stop the run on defense, and win on special teams. And we're doing that because of Ben LeCompte and guys like Bruce Anderson. Let's look at those two playoff games, the numbers put together. And, I mean, this is the stuff that's going to get you a pro contract right here. 11 total punts against Montana and you and I, averaging 43. I mean, look at these numbers, Coach. And 11 kickoffs, 8 touchbacks. That's an underrated stat right there. That's a really underrated stat. The Northern Iowa had exceptional kick returners, and we never let them have a chance. You know, and he'll have a chance at the next level because of that, because they want guys that can kick off and punt, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Ben, ben, will, ben will be in a camp. He'll have an opportunity. How about Carson Wentz? Uh, that was the hubbub all week. Uh, how did he do in practice? What did you see from him? This is his season stats here. Yeah, he progressed well. We'll, we'll find out uh, a little bit more this week. Yep. But uh, he was able to spin it a little bit more uh, as the week went on, and, and we'll just continue to progress. Uh, it's good to just see him out there doing something. I'm sure it's uh, refreshing for him to at least be throwing the football at this point. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you can tell he's, he's really itching to get back, yeah. and, and we've got to make sure that he's 100% healthy. Yep, let's look at the bracket. Uh, very interesting weekend. Uh, Illinois State was upset. Uh, they had the home field, uh, did not have a great crowd, came out flat, and Richmond made them pay, Coach. They really did. Uh, I watched a little bit of the game, and, and Richmond really played inspired. They had a great quarterback and, and a running back that did some great things. And then on, on defense, they did not let Co uh, Copridge or uh, Roberson run the football. And on the top part of the bracket, there's the old Bearcats. They're still clicking. Uh, this is the fourth year out of five they've been in the semifinals. They've been to the title game twice. Obviously, we've played them. They have a playoff <laughs> switch, apparently. Yeah, they, they really do. And th that'll be a great football game. Yeah. Two extremely talented teams in Sam and Jacksonville State. Tell you what, if you haven't watched Jacksonville State, folks, this Troy Main Pope, the running back for Jacksonville, is very good. And they got a lot of transfers that can play football, don't they? Yeah, they're an exceptional team. That'll be a, a great battle between two teams that uh, are really athletic and, and will hit you. After a powerhouse football game like we just watched, I think it's uh, very appropriate that we're going to talk with Jim Cramer coming up and talk about the weight room a little bit. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. Each year, a few true freshmen play for the Bison. and this year, the first-year guys are really making an impact. It provides an interesting wrinkle for strength coach Jim Cramer. How do you mold the new player while he is actually playing? We find out in this week's Olaf Anderson Construction Feature Story. Bison on three, one, two, three. Bison. When Bison freshmen get to campus, they learn a lot of lessons. Stay down, fast start, go! One of the first will be how important Jim Cramer is to them as athletes. He's the heart and soul of this team throughout the years. Everyone builds a, a fantastic relationship with him, and it's, it's hard not to. I mean, feel the energy when you're around him. He just loves this program so much and what it's about. The North Dakota State Strength and Conditioning Program has proven itself. Stay with these weights, non-green card guys. They have a blueprint that gets to work through a redshirt freshman program. But when a player steps up to make a difference as a true freshman, Coach Kramer truly shines. I think the number one quality of a strength coach can sometimes be, you know, being creative, thinking on your feet. Coach Kramer and his staff adjusted last year with R.J. Erzendowski, and this year they are proving their worth again with Robbie Grimsley and Bruce Anderson. Just coming in the summer, he's made me a stronger, faster athlete, and during the season I'm actually getting stronger and faster. I mean, I came in a little more physically advanced than some of the other guys, and that helped me be able to play at this early age, but... uh. No, he's just trying to keep me up uh, my weight as much as possible throughout the season. Bar speed, especially on those high poles, but not just the high poles. As true freshmen expected to play each week, Anderson and Grimsley can't push as hard in the weight room. That's it, good. So Coach Kramer focuses on technique and maintenance. Start though, tight back. Building the foundation for major games in the off season. We've seen a lot of progress out of those first few freshmen. And I think that comes to just comes down to just individualizing that program. Coach Kramer uses the present to push these young talents, reminding them that their time is now. 
but he finds the promise of tomorrow just as motivational. He kind of showed me what my frame can be like if uh, if I keep working hard and uh, eating right. So, I mean, I never thought I can get to that, and he's just showing me the possibilities. You have to do that. That's that's the uh, just the nature of the beast, if you want to call it that, or that's that's what you have to do to get each player up to speed. That's the individualization that we, we do. Be able to hear your feet hit. Don't be soft. A year-round commitment and a perfect example of just how important Jim Kramer is to these athletes. Keep that bar close. Shrug. That's it. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Beth Wool. Coach, usually a, a player red shirts, beefs up, gets in that program, then he's ready to go in his second yeah. year. But guys like Bruce and Robbie, they, they have to play while going through that. It's a little tougher, isn't it? it? It really is because their bodies are a little bit more beat up and they hadn't played this long of a season. That's the thing that's tough is to play as many games as yeah. we have and practice as much as we have. But uh, they've done a tremendous job of, of keeping their weight up, and that's the thing you always worry about and, and staying durable. Yeah, that's a great story right there. Well, this week's Peterson Farm Seed future crop of bison is Dom Davis. Dom is a rising corner on scout team. He comes from the same high school as Pierre G. Tucker in the St. Louis area. In fact, the two are cousins. Davis says his red shirt has gone well and he is learning what it takes. Fall camp itself is almost like a whole high school football career. So, and then you add that on top of the season. So, it was just really difficult and you just have to adapt to it and listen to what the coaches are saying and buy into what they're saying because it will help you out in the long run. Coach, it's interesting. They're, they're from the same high school down in the St. Louis area, Pierre G. Tucker and uh, Dom Davis. Does that help sometimes to have a, a player in the program that's already from a high school and then there's an example that Dom can use there? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, uh, it's really been helpful for Dom. And Jamar Kane does such a tremendous job in the St. Louis area, and we've gotten some quality players out of there. And, and Dom is so smart because he's uh, just a sponge with C.J. Smith and Jordan Champion to learn as much as he can because he knows those guys are going to be gone. Yeah, there'll be some opportunity there and uh, two great guys to learn yeah. from for sure. Well, we're still going to talk a little bit more about the Richmond Spiders and set up the week. Stay with us. All right, Coach, uh, a Friday semifinal. It's a third straight year for that, so I'm guessing it's a little bit of a routine how you schedule that. Yeah, it really is for us. We have finals this week, so mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to be able to balance our time and, and find out when we can practice based on the guys' final schedule. But our guys have been through this for the last few years. We're excited because it is at home, which, you know, kind of you get a, you almost get a full day back. How about the emotion of the last two weeks, Coach? The Montana game was very emotional. Yeah. Northern Iowa, very emotional. So to do that three straight weeks, we talked about it last week, to do it two straight is hard. Yeah. How about three straight? Yeah, it is, but uh, yeah. it's also playoff time, yeah. and, and we had the same thing last year after South Dakota State and after Coastal Carolina, and it, it'll take a few days to get to get our guys back, and, and, uh, and we'll make sure that they're fresh for Saturday, and we'll take care of that. And, and fans, they need to just rest up, <laughs> and they need to be ready to go on Friday night because we need that place as loud as, as we can get it, just like it's been the last couple weeks. Yeah, Richmond has never been to Gate City Bank Field. First time for them, so we need to welcome them with a little <laughs> noise, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> that, that'll be a huge factor, and, and they're a... Uh, a little bit I've watched. They're they're a pretty balanced team. The, yeah. They'll throw the ball and run the ball equally as well. And they've got some really good skill players. So we have to make it difficult on those guys to to snap the football. And so we'll need uh, the Fargo Dome rocking again. They have 21 picks. That is a an alarming number, really. Uh, and one guy with nine, one guy with four. Both those were first team CAA guys. So yeah. there's some talent there. Yeah, they've always had traditionally a really good program yeah. at Richmond, and, and they're in the playoffs or or perennial playoff team every year and uh, they've been in the semifinals before I know firsthand because uh, they beat Northern Iowa when I was at Northern Iowa in the Unidome so uh, different coaching staff and stuff but uh, there's plenty of tradition at Richmond. Well let's look at the bracket one more time for folks uh, who are trying to absorb all this really NDSU Richmond is the Friday game 7 p.m. and then you go to the top of the bracket and it's Jacksonville State and Sam Houston that's the three o'clock uh, Saturday afternoon game and Coach, just talk about it. Final four, I mean, this is the fifth straight year now. There's a ton on the line. This is really fun, and the guys are experienced with this situation. They, they really are, and it's really hard to do. We talked about oh. that last night. To do this five years in a row, to get to the semifinals with the quality of teams you face every year, but our guys never get ahead of themselves. It's just one day at a time, one play at a time, uh, and, and to have an opportunity to play in front of the, our home fans oh, again, can't be any better and I know our fans are excited about it and I promise you our players are excited they could stay in Fargo. Congratulations to you and your staff, your players, uh, everybody involved. What a 
fantastic effort to still be dancing here in late December. The Richmond Spiders come to Fargo. We'll have the Bison Radio Network fired up. Of course, it's national television. It's going to be a fun, fun week, and we will see you Friday.